Hi, I'm Rhythm Man, and today I wanted to share my favorite Warframe updates of 2017. This was a controversial year for gaming, especially with the whole loot box thing going on with EA and a disappointing sequel, Destiny 2, and their update locking players out of content they previously paid for. And if you're here in the US, you may be aware of the recent changes to net neutrality that were approved despite overwhelming popular and loud opposition. But for a Warframe community, this was a great year. There was minor disappointment from time to time, but overall we got some great updates and we didn't have to buy loot boxes, pay our internet providers for an extra fee, or purchase mandatory DLC to enjoy it. So without any further ado, I'd like to present my top six favorite Warframe updates in 2017. Number six, Octavia. Anyone could guess this item would be going on the list. My username is Rhythmin after all, but it's not just because I'm a musical guy that this is on the list. How many games do you know where you can attack the foe with music? Now, I'm not so naive as to say no game does this. Arc Age and Brutal Legend come to mind. And technically, in Sonic Heroes, the Chaotix could do the same thing in a special attack. Still, I can't think of a game that lets you customize your music by letting you create your own bass, drum, and melody sequence, as well as swap out instrument kits. And how you customize your music actually affects how your abilities work. DE brilliantly gave players the minor pentatonic scale to play with, meaning it's incredibly difficult to sound bad even if you have no musical ability and get sent into a squad with two other Octavias. And the look of the sequencer is unique and fits into Warframe perfectly. This update also came with dance emotes, so suffice to say, Warframe became a lot more fun with this release. I do think that the implementation of this update could be refined, and perhaps someday Octavia will get the rework hammer. But there's no denying that this update is a unique and impressive feat that no other developer can claim to this date. Number 5, Captura. This update is a Machinima creator's wet dream. Captura allows you to load up your favorite scenes from Warframe and spawn any enemy you have fully scanned into the codex and just toy around. It's basically a sandbox for Warframe. You can pause time and freely move your camera. You can also set filters, depth of field, and lighting to your pleasing to make great pictures. And I've seen some awesome pictures coming from my clan members. Many Warframe Discords have a chat dedicated to these Captura screenshots. And in true DE fashion, they have tweaked it since its release using community feedback. Now you can invite other players to your Captura scene and take awesome group shots. It's impressive what DE will go through to empower their players with the tools they need to get creative and have fun. Number four, personal quarters. This is one of the last updates to ship this year, and I'm glad it came in time to make the list. Let's face it, Fashion Frame is and will always be the true end game. And if DE knows how to do one thing, is how to empower the player to customize their experience. Ship customization has always been great. You can place decorations, color the inside and outside of your ship, and hang pictures and fan art to make changing your loadout and crafting weapons a more aesthetically pleasing experience. But the release of personal quarters gives you access to a room on your ship that is 100% purely cosmetic. You can set up vignettes, add fish to your fish tank, and display your favorite loadout. You have to be fairly high level to access it, but it's fun to customize. This update also brought with it the Soma Chord, which is a kind of jukebox you can use to play music around the ship. And to make this update even sweeter, it lets other players finally visit your ship. If you are a low level and don't have a good gun, this is of course a waste of time. But if you are in search for a true in-game experience, look no further. Number three, 
Dual wielding. Dual wielding isn't new. Plenty of games let you wield more than one weapon. A Warframe has had dual swords and dual daggers for a long time. But when I say dual wielding, I'm referring to the ability to wield a gun in your left hand and a glaive in your right hand simultaneously. This is something that, like updates before it, I don't see a lot of games doing. And if they do it, it's not as awesome and as fun as in Warframe. Your glaive, of course, is a bladed weapon you can beat enemies down with or throw at them, Captain America style. Of course, it's not just your glaive you can dual wield. Any one-handed secondary firearm can be wielded with any thrown melee weapon. While dual wielding, your throw attacks are more powerful and can be performed in the air. You can also switch between melee and gunplay quicker, even quicker than you normally would if you use quick attack. And it's possible to charge throw or detonate without switching to melee mode. To make this update more enticing, thrown weapons have seen buffs across the board. So not only is dual wielding cool, but it's also practical. Number two, Limbo Rework. If you are a subscriber, you probably know that I am a huge fan of Limbo. Years ago, when I was looking for a Warframe to specialize in, I went to Warframe's official YouTube channel and watched the profile for every available Warframe. When I saw Limbo, I knew he was for me. I skipped the quest to build him and purchase him outright because I just had to have him. Limbo was an anomaly, an entity that existed between spaces, an intangible creature covered in darkness. And even before the rework, I found ways to make a Warframe most people consider useless, fun, and effective. If you don't know, Limbo has the ability to banish himself or others to the Rift Plane, an interdimensional space where things cannot interact with things in the normal material plane. This made for interesting hijinks if you can wrap your head around the idea of playing in two separate planes of existence. Still, the undeniable fact was that Limbo wasn't a good Warframe. I had to sacrifice damage and crowd control to use him, so there were times I had to switch to less interesting one-dimensional Warframes to get the job done. So imagine my delight when Limbo got a rework that completely revamped his kit. Now he could banish groups of enemies into the rift, freeze time for enemies and projectiles, and dash into the rift quickly and seamlessly. He got a slight damage buff too. After a brief ridiculously powerful damage buff, Limbo is hundreds of times stronger than he was before. And because his mechanics are still complex and confusing, I still get to enjoy being one of the few players who routinely uses him. We've also gotten a few really good Limbo skins and helmets throughout the year, so my gentleman frame looks as dashing as ever. The Limbo rework dropped at the same time as Octavia, so suffice to say, I felt like that update was made just for me. In fact, let's stop for a moment to think about how both Limbo and Octavia use mechanics that would normally be the entire game for most other games, but in Warframe, it's just one of the hundreds of ways to play. Number one, Planes of Eidolon. Okay, truth be told, it's not my favorite Warframe update. Not the absolute favorite anyway. I mean, the Limbo Octavia update was probably more my favorite, most favorite update, but Planes of Eidolon is the update that changed Warframe the most this year. It is probably the East's most ambitious update because it's unlike anything else in Warframe. The Planes of Eidolon is an open world expansion where you can undertake new missions. These missions seem more important because you're actually helping the Ostron people push back against the Grenier, instead of just doing random crap that the, load, the Lotus tells you to do. 
You can deploy your Arcwing at will and mine and fish for resources to craft custom weapons and armor. There's also a new boss and it's huge. And our Warframes move rather quickly, so it's easy to underestimate just how huge the Planes of Eidolon is. So huge, in fact, that they had to change how damage falloff works on weapons and massively optimize the game engine to be able to run such large environments without slowing to a crawl. It is a bit of a bummer. The plane's economy is almost completely cut off from the rest of the game, so progress in the planes doesn't equate to much progress anywhere else in the game. Which really sucks for new players who haven't figured that out yet because it's one of the first areas unlocked in the game. But Digital Extremes usually fixes these types of issues eventually. It depends on feedback they get, which is another highlight of this update. Initially, the amount of grinding you needed to do was ridiculous and getting items was time consuming and expensive. But the developers took feedback very well and made tweaks after tweak until it was at the point that it's not too punishing, but not too easy. The update was rocky to start for sure, but it's turning into a nice getaway from the narrow corridor shooting we're used to on Warframe. And DE doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. I'm sure we can look forward to even bigger updates in the future. Well, there you have it. My favorite updates this year. Of course, there were way more updates. We got Hero, we got Gara, Operator Warriors, awesome Tinogen and Deluxe skins, and several quality of life changes. And it's all free. Yes, I'm throwing a little shade here, but I don't think it's without warrant. I'm still a little mad Warframe lost to Destiny 2 at the Game Awards for Best Ongoing Game. I would have accepted it if they lost to a game that was more than three months old, but that was ridiculous. Talk about rigged elections. But that's okay. Warframe is a great secret, despite being lesser known and not getting as much praise as a lot of other AAA games. It packs more features than most other games and doesn't cost a dime to play. The community is passionate and generous, and so are you, my subscribers and viewers. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and comment below with your favorite updates of 2017, and we can discuss them. Thanks for a great year, and here's to a great 2018.